Once upon a time, a very, very long time ago, in August 2016, a woman got lost in Aomori Prefecture in Japan. She was on her way to a beautiful blue sea to walk barefoot upon the beach and pick up sand dollars and sea glass and seashells, watch the waves crash upon the cliffs, and eat lunch from a grassy knoll. And she ended up on Route 102 on her way out of Tawada City in Tohoku. Turning a corner, this woman saw a huge orange tori. She knew there must be a shrine behind it somewhere, and being so adventurous by nature, this woman could not resist. She parked her car in the neighboring grocery store as she walked to the large tori of this sacred place. Entering the grounds covered in a foggy mist, and with no humans, as far as the eyes could see, gave her an atmosphere of creepiness of Avalon in the midst of the moors and felt more lost than she was driving around in circles for hours. She stood on a small stone bridge, weathered through time, but still in good condition. And she swept her camera back and forth and back and forth, recognizing an overgrown magnificent water feature underneath with rocks and boulders set perfectly zen. As she looked around, she was fascinated by the stone features, which were crumbling and needed repair, except for the bridge that she had just stood on. Questions were on her mind. Where are the people? Why is no one here? Should I be here? Who is the Kami, the God? This is an Inari shrine, a Shinto shrine. Beliefs in good fortune, harvest of crops and rice. And what's with all the foxes? And then for a fleeting second, something flashed in her brain. <laughs> what was that? she exclaimed and disregarded the thought and forged on. Strolling through the grounds and venturing through several Tory gates, some that looked brand new and some very old, she discovered three many shrines. Noticing a fresh carrot as an offering, she thought to herself, how nice. The white papers hung symbolizing purity and the special twined rope with large wooden beads and tassels to ward off evil spirits were all there too. Then something stopped her in her tracks Something was happening. Why does baby metal keep appearing in her head, she thought. Her mind started racing. Suddenly, all the pieces of information she knows of visiting and living in Japan as a gaijin. This is an anarchy shrine. Kitsune. 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 The boards are turned up on the shrine. That means a deity is feminine, a goddess. Kitsune, the magical ship shifter, the guardian of Sambo Jinta. Kitsune, the messengers of the fox god. I am standing on the northeast location, the entrance for demons. The foxes are there to guard the natural powers. A nine-tailed fox, a thousand years old, a Narisama, Kitsune, cast illusions, read your thought, the messengers, baby metal, oh my god. This is a fox shrine. It's all clear now. The woman knows. She knows. Behold, this is a Kitsune shrine, Sambo Gejinja. The Inari is the god of agriculture, guarded by Kitsune, the fox. It is a fox shrine, she exclaimed. How did she know? Because of the fox god's messengers. Sue metal, you metal, mo metal, known to the world as baby metal. Who has shaken up the music industry by a head-on collision of metal and cuteness, which is irresistible. With something new the world has never seen, and keeping it all real and keeping it Japanese. Traveling the world, opening up world famous artists such as Lady Gaga, playing with all of metal's most notorious artists such as Anthrax, Metallica, Korn, and the list goes on. Baby Metal will be at Tokyo Dome just four hours away, but harboring such disappointment, this woman will not attend as this show is sold out. But with a new understanding of what she was witnessing, 
made her feel accomplished. She actually learned something about Japanese culture through music. Baby metal is a genius concept devised from a true belief in Japan's culture. Who knew? The shrine now had meaning. The prayer plaques with the wishes to be granted, the paper lanterns, the first paint and section shows a renovation in progress. She noticed a lone woman through a window in the white building next to the shrine. She softly walked over not to disturb and knocked lightly on the door. The woman answered. She spoke Japanese only, but understood this woman's Japangrish. She wanted to purchase a good luck charm. The woman let her in. She picked out a charm. Arigato gozaimasu, she said as she exited. The woman walked to her car and drove off into the sunset. Not to worry, she did know the route home. The end. Sorta. Of. So the moral of this story is, you never know where you're going to end up when you get lost in Japan. I did get my charm. This is, you can read it, Senbong Jinja Tawada. And this charm is good luck in driving. Because I tend to drive on the wrong side of the road quite a bit. It's difficult getting used to driving on the left side. I want to thank Baby Metal for giving me a revelation. Good luck at Tokyo Dome. And uh, you never know what you'll learn through music. And I learned a lot about this culture, this language, and the Japanese people. And I've met a lot of artists that are amazing and super talented. And Baby Metal is one of them. And I've been following them since they began. So, if you're ever anywhere near Baby Metal, go see the show. It'll blow your skirt up. It's different than anything you've ever seen in your life. I guarantee it. But anyway, thanks for my message, girls. I got it. Love from Japan.